Hello, here we are on the Evening Quail. I'm so glad that you have decided to join us. It's been an interesting time with this podcast. Uh, keep figuring out how to lose recordings. Um, I, know, I don't really know what my problem is, but for some reason I, I tend to not save things correctly or something is wrong. I don't know. So it took a little bit more effort than perhaps it should have to get this episode out to you. So I hope that you enjoy it and that it isn't bad. Today's Evening Quail is brought to you by the Light 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 Bulb Company. Light Light has been making some incredible light bulbs for just a little while now. Everyone knows how awful it is to have heavy light bulbs. You might drop them. They might shatter. They make you tired just carrying them. Just driving those heavy light bulbs home from the store affects your gas mileage. Well, you need light bulbs that are the lightest light bulbs on the market the lightest light bulbs in the universe light light is the brand and light 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 bulbs come in many varieties but their most popular light bulb is the light light white light bulb but they are excited to be introducing not only the light light bright white light bulb but also the light light slight bright white light bulb but that's not all you know your kids will want one in their room, so that's why. They've developed the Light Light Slight Bright White Night Light Light Bulb with its automatic light sensor. And for those who like to go on walks through the woods at night, they have the Light Light Bright White Night Light Sight Light Light Bulb that straps to your forehead. You will find all this and more at your corner light bulb store, including the Light Light Slight Bright White Night Fright Light Bulb for those spooky fall occasions, and the Light Light Slight Bright White Night Fight Sight Light Bulb, and the Light Light Might Kite White Sight Night Light Bulbs, which I will just let you try and figure out what those are for. So be a Rudite and get the right light. Get Light 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 Bulbs today. One of the fascinating things that I, that I think keeps happening in Scripture, the more and the more I look at it, is the bookend effect or the amount of parallels that you can find between the beginning of the Bible and the end of the Bible. And then, of course, you have the things in between that even point to each other. But in the book of Genesis, particularly in just the first chapters of Genesis, there's so much that that sets the stage, the foundation for everything, even until the last chapter of Revelation. In Genesis chapter 1, you notice that God creates light. It's Everything is dark. And then God says, let there be light, and there is light. And then he creates the sun after he had already created the light. He creates humans. He puts them on the earth and he tells them to reign over the earth, to rule over the earth. And this is the condition of the Garden of Eden. This is the condition of, of, of creation, this perfect, tranquil place where man is not toiling. Humans are not toiling. They're not suffering. It's not a painful kind of work. It's a reigning ruling kind of work that they've been set to do over creation. But then, of course, there's the fall in Genesis chapter 3. Everything gets messed up. The darkness overtakes. Work is no longer a good thing. Work is now hard. And, and things are never the same. There's a lack of confidence that we had before. Things are not bright. Things are not positive. It has turned from a world of ruling and reigning and light into a world of toil and suffering, negativity. But in the New Testament, we take on a different posture because we have read who the light of the world is. There's Jesus, the light of the world, that's mentioned in John. 
but there's also his people, the children of light, the light of the world that goes through the body of Christ, his church. And his church knows when they read the book of Revelation that the book of Revelation ends not with darkness perpetuating through the ages, but by a return to the original order of creation in a new creation. Not only a new earth, but a new heaven. A new heaven and a new earth. And in Revelation chapters 21 and 22, it talks about how in the city, in the new Jerusalem, in the new creation, it says there will be no need for a son. S-U-N. Because the son, S-O-N, and the father and the Lord, the Lord will be the light. God is the light. There's no need for the sun there. And right after that, it says his people will reign forever and ever. So do we who are in Christ walk around like we've been defeated? Or do we walk around like we are reigning, that we are on the winning team, that we are looking forward to something that we can be confident in, that we can be positive about, that is really a good thing? Do people see us and define us as the most positive people they know? Are you the most positive person that you know? And if not, why not? What will it take to get there? What will it take to become a person of light who knows the end of the story is good? I've been enjoying some extra sunshine over the past couple of weeks in the mornings. I'll be brushing my teeth in our bathroom window. It faces the sunrise. So I'll open the window. I'll stick my face out in the window while I'm brushing my teeth. And I'll let the sun just shine on my face for 60 seconds or longer as I'm brushing my teeth. And I feel like I'm charging. I'm soaking up that vitamin D, right? I'm getting healthier by sticking my face in it. It's something that I really need. And I feel like it's energizing me. It probably is helping me with my energy. It's just like those uh, glow-in-the-dark stickers that you'd put on your ceiling that, that a lot of times they work better if they're charged in the light, right? But it's the same way with our souls and with our attitudes, with our spirits. If we do not spend time in the light, then we're not going to be a people of light. We have to charge ourselves by spending time in the word, spending time with the light, Jesus, but also spending time with positive, real Christ followers. That's how I get charged. That's how I become more positive. Because if we are not known as a positive people, a victorious people, a confident people, then why would people have confidence in what we claim to have confidence in? If we don't have any hope to give a reason for that people see in us, then we're never going to get the chance to share why we have such a hope. I hope that makes sense. Here's some quotes that I've shared with you already in the band app, but um, perhaps you didn't see them. One is by Edith Wharton. She says, there are two ways of spreading light to be the candle or the mirror that reflects it. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Returning hate for hate multiplies hate, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Anne Frank said, Look how a single candle can both defy and define the darkness. And Helen Keller who was actually blind and deaf, said, Unless we form the habit of going to the Bible in bright moments, as well as in trouble, we cannot fully respond to its consolations because we lack equilibrium between light and darkness. Ah, that's good. I hope that you'll look up a couple of songs that um, I can't put them in here because they're you know they're copyrighted or whatever but one is a song from about 15 years ago by a band switchfoot called the shadow proves the sunshine 
And then the other one is more recent by Hillsong called See the Light. Look up those songs, listen to them, have a time of reflection. Reflect on the words. What, what do you think they mean by some of these words? Okay? All right. Well, I'm going to let you go. Thank you for joining us on the Evening Quail. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, a wonderful weekend. And remember that there's a lot of good things going on in the world There's a lot of good things going on in God's story. We don't always see it. We don't always know it, but you have to look for it. You got to look for it. It's there. It's there. Believe it. Okay, goodbye.